All right, guys, on today's episode, I'm going to show you how to make these really simple leashes. Um, you can use these on your kayak for whether it be for tools or, uh, you know, keeping your rods down, whatever you want to use them for. But stick around. I'm going to show you how to make these really, really easy. So this is everything you're going to need to uh, get this done. In order to make this leash here, um, which you can make in varying different lengths, but uh, this one works out pretty good for me. So all you're going to need is, this is just weed eater line. Um, I had this sitting around, so it's just good to you know reuse some stuff that's just kind of junk. Um, it's got a decent, decent thickness to it. As you can tell, once this is all done, it's got a nice amount of spring to it. It'll hold really, really nicely. Uh, so you need the weed eater line, you'll need two crimps that are going to be the same size as your weed eater line. So basically just make sure when you bring it in, that one's all shoot up here, let me grab the other end. Make sure that that fits in there nice and snug, and then when you actually go through and hammer this down, it'll have a good connection. So weed eater line, your two connections, and two small aluminum carabiners. That's all you're going to need. Um, really, really easy to make. The supplies you're going to need to physically create this is going to be an old frying pan or a saucepan or anything you want to use. Um, you don't have to use an old one, but you know it's better to not get uh, yelled at by the missus for using the good stuff. The other thing is going to be a small wooden or fiberglass dowel. Um, basically, all you're going to do is take this line and wrap it nice and tight around here. Um, you can tell I drilled two small pilot holes in here. Again, that just fits the line right through. And uh, I'll get started and show you how this works. Just make sure when you cut your dowel that it is the size that it will be able to be submerged in your pan. So, let's get started. Basically, the first thing you're going to want to do is just pull a little bit of length off. You're going to want to take a section of this, put it right through your hole, get a few inches on the other end. Then you're just going to want to real slow and tight just wrap this right around your rod. And you want to do this nice and slow, make sure it's good and tight because that's going to be really crucial for uh, making sure that this thing has a lot of good spring to it. So I'm going to just continue like I'm doing here and uh, I'll get back with you in just a second and show you what to do from there. Okay guys, we're almost done wrapping here. Basically, you're just going to keep going all the way till you get to the end. And what I try to do is just wind it down as you're going. You'll feel it has a little bit of a gap in there every once in a while. So just keep on wrapping. And then when you get to the end here, just take your end. I probably cut this a little shorter than I should have, but it will do the job. And you just want to get it pushed through there. All right, now you can just uh, even these out a little bit, which isn't too hard. You just kind of rotate it down, and we'll get ready to go to the next step. All right, guys, next step in the process, basically, you can just fill up that pan with uh, water, bring that to a boil, and all you're going to do is just take your rod that's got everything wrapped and just dunk it right in there. Um, generally, what I'll do is just take some tongs, lay them on top just to keep it submerged. You're going to let that roll for uh, about 10, 11 minutes. And then what you're going to do is immediately throw that straight into the freezer for another 10 to 15 minutes. So uh, I'm going to do that and I'll get back with you as soon as it's done. Okay guys, so we're back. We got it out of the uh, freezer. So now basically all you're going to want to do is just push this through, which sometimes you need pliers to grab it and pull it out of there. So you get that side out. You can loosen it up if you want. It makes it a little bit easier. Go ahead and get the other side out of there. All right. And there you have it. Now you just got to get your rod out. And the first time that you do this on a fresh, if you're using a wooden dowel, it is going to create these ridges for you, uh, which helps when you go to do the next one if you do multiples of these. So 
just uh, hang on to that and that'll work out good for you. All right, so now this works as it is. I mean, it does spring and everything like that, but it is over time going to start stretching out and stay firm further out. Uh, so basically what you're going to want to do is go ahead and take starting at one end and just start reversing the loop and just keep doing that all the way down. You can do this with a drill. It'll make it a heck of a lot faster, but uh, I'm just going to do it all by hand. So I'm just going to keep looping that around and reversing that. So uh, check back in just a second. I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so we're almost done completely reversing this loop here. Just gonna continue to uh, reverse it all the way till we get to the end. And almost there. All right, so once you get it all the way to here, all you're gonna wanna do now, make sure that your loop is outside. See how it's a lot tighter. Before it was real springy and stayed open and it would have been stretched out. So now this is going to keep it nice and tight because it's against the way that it wants to be. So now all you're going to do is just take your two crimps. You're going to put it right on there. Slide it on. and See, I got the right size so they're nice and tight. And I'm actually going to run this a little bit further down just because that one loop I made was a little bit small. Pull it right on through here. Just loop that back and go right back through the other side of the crimp. Just like that. Perfect. So now I'll go ahead and make another loop on this side. This side I'm actually going to make it a little bit larger of a loop because I think I'm going to use this one for my um, paddle. I'm going to use this as a paddle leash. So make this one a little bit larger loop. Bring that right to the edge, just like that. All right, so just a little bit larger because I'm gonna wrap this one around with some uh, Velcro or a zip tie on the actual paddle. Now, all you're gonna wanna do is take these and hammer them nice and flat. Um, they're not gonna completely flat now, but you'll see they get pretty dented up. Um, I can't do that in here on the table, so I'm gonna go knock that out real quick and be right back with you. Okay, guys, we're back. Got these all hammered out, um, nice and flat. You can tell they're crimped up really nice. These things are not coming out of there, not gonna go anywhere. So now all you gotta do is just take your uh, two little aluminum carabiners, throw them right on either end, and there you have it. You got yourself a nice DIY leash, really, really super inexpensive. Um, this was all stuff I just had laying around. I mean, these were from an old lanyard that I had, um, had the crimp connectors and had some of the weed eater line just sitting in storage. So this was 100% free for me. It took about 30 minutes of time. Um, this is a great way to uh, make sure none of your stuff floats away if you ever happen to capsize, if you're in the surf or anything, um, or if you, you, know, you get onto a big fish and your rod decides to go over, this will keep it attached to the boat. So, uh, you can find a lot of different uses for these. Um, hope you guys liked the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, please make sure you let me know what you think of it. And like I say, there's going to be a lot more content coming very soon. So we appreciate it. Thanks for watching Inexpensive Outdoors. See you guys later.